Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at inequalities in one triangle. Uh, so when I look at the different pieces of a single triangle, um, comparing those things in terms of their measurements uh, to, to see what's bigger, what's smaller, that kind of thing. All right. And so the first thing we're going to look at here is the comparison property of equality. And it says this, if I have something like A equals B plus C, where C is something that's bigger than zero, all right, then A has to be greater than B. All right. If I have something B and I add more to it, all right, and E equals A, then A must be bigger because it was B, but more added on. All right. It should be pretty obvious when you look at that kind of thing. But A equals B plus C. Again, if B has something added to it, something positive added to it, then A has to be larger than B uh, because it was the result of adding something on to B. OK, that's the comparison property. And uh, we're going to use that in this first uh, proof here, um, the corollary to the triangle exterior angle theorem. When you remember the triangle exterior angle theorem, all right, was the one that said, hey, the exterior angle equals the sum of the remote interiors, okay? So in this particular example, angle one equals angle three plus angle four, all right? That was the uh, exterior angle theorem. That's one of those things that we know. But the, the corollary we want to prove here, we want to show that angle one is bigger than each of those angles. All right, that no matter what, angle one has to be bigger than angle three. Angle one has to be bigger than angle four. Okay, and hopefully you're already looking at that saying, well, angle one is angle three plus angle four. So yeah, it doesn't have to be bigger than each of those. That's what we want to prove. Okay, so start to think about how we would do that in terms of the comparison property. All right, so if I were to, to do this, let's, uh, let's set up our statements and reasons here. Everybody's favorite. And I'm going to start with uh, what I know here. I'm going to start with the, the given. So we have triangle ABC. And angle one is an exterior angle. Okay. And again, that was given. All right, next, let's talk about what we know. We already just uh, just said that I remember the, the uh, exterior angle theorem. I remember that the exterior angle, that uh, the measure of angle one, has to equal the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four. Okay? And I know that because that's what the exterior angle theorem said. The, the exterior angle equals the sum of the remote interior, and I can just write that. Exterior angle equals sum of remote interior angles, okay? And so if I look at this, basically I have, uh, you know, the measure of angle one equals these two things added together. Well, think about it this way, all right? If we're talking about the comparison property, all we need to show at this point is that, you know, the thing that's being added is bigger than zero. And so I can immediately say that. It's really easy to say that. Okay, I can say that the measure of angle 3 has to be greater than 0. I could also say that the measure of angle 4 has to be greater than 0. And I can say that because this thing's a triangle. All right. If they're not greater than 0, then the triangle doesn't exist. All right. So I can say that's because the triangle ABC exists. Okay. And now from here, I, I have the, the uh, comparison property that we just talked about. If uh, the measure of angle one is three plus four, well, then it's got to be bigger than three, okay? It's got to be bigger than four. So if I kind of look at this twice, I could say that the measure of angle one has to be greater than the measure of angle three, okay? I can also say, when I kind of relook at this thing, that the measure of angle one has to be greater than the measure of angle four. And that's just that comparison property, okay? If three gets at something added to it and that equals one, well, then one has to be bigger than three because it was the, the version of three where something was, was added on, okay? And then we could say the same thing about four. And again, that's just that comparison property that we just talked about. And again, this probably seems really obvious, but we want to do the proof so that we can use this from here on out, okay? And really, that's the only proof we'll, we'll do here today. The rest of these will kind of just uh, uh, make assumptions about the proofs because they all kind of go back to this same concept of showing that this guy plus this guy equals this guy 
Uh, and then th these two things compare this way because, you know, this guy has to be bigger than this thing because it was that guy plus this guy, all right? So all of the proofs for all the theorems we're going to talk about today essentially go back to this same kind of thing, all right? So we'll kind of assume uh, the, the proofs uh, a little bit later, all right? So the corollary just says this, uh, if I have an exterior angle, then that thing has to be bigger than either of the remote interior angles, okay? We know that the, the exterior angle equals the sum of the remote interiors, but now we can also make comparisons here and say, hey, it's bigger than e either of those, okay? Um, other theories about this, and again, we use the same kind of thing. We use those exterior angles, and we can easily prove uh, this uh, relationship between the size of the angle and the opposite side. All right. So theorems about angles and sides of triangles, we're just going to kind of summarize this as, as one thing and just say a relationship exists between the length of a side and the measure of the uh, angle opposite that side. And basically, it's this proportional relationship where the larger the angle is, the longer the opposite side is. OK, so based on the size of the angle, we can determine which side is the biggest side inside of a triangle. All right. The biggest side is always across from the biggest angle. The smallest side is always across from the smallest angle. There's this proportional relationship between the size of the side and the size of the opposite angle. Okay. For example, if I look at something like this guy, it says list the sides or angles uh, from least to greatest. And so like in this one, I can see which, which angles are, are bigger and smaller. So I'm not going to list the angles from least to greatest. Let's list the sides from least to greatest. And I can do this based on the angles. And so when I look at this thing, the smallest angle is right here. It's the 20, which means the smallest side must be side B. The next smallest angle is right here. It's the 70, which means the next smallest angle must be A. The next smallest angle, or the biggest angle rather, is this guy. So the biggest side must be C. And that's all this, this thing says, that, that relationship idea is that, hey, if as the size of the angle goes up, the, side of the, opposite, the size of the opposite side goes up, okay? And I can write it this way, all right? So B is smaller than A, A is smaller than C, or you could say, hey, C is bigger than A, uh, which is also bigger than B, all right? But there's this relationship between the size of the angle and the opposite side. I always like to think of it as like an alligator, you know, a less than and greater than symbols we always thought of that way. But think about it this way, you know, the the size of the alligator is like, this is how wide this alligator can open its mouth. Like, that's how big the alligator is. So that's the smallest alligator, and it's chomping down on the smallest meal, okay? The next one, ready? Like, uh, let me jump to the biggest alligator, ready? The biggest alligator, see, so the mouth is open wide, is eating the biggest meal, okay? It's chomping down on that opposite side, okay? And so the one in the middle is the one in the middle. OK, if I look at this one, the same kind of thing, the reverse relationship is true. All right. If the biggest angle is across from the biggest side, the biggest side is across from the biggest angle. So when I look at something like this guy, I can see the size of the of the sides. Uh, the, the smallest side is right here, which means the smallest angle must be across from that angle, too. OK. All right, let me go. Let me go green, green on this. Green feels like a good color to use here. Triangle one. Uh, the next one right here, the, the next smallest side is the 20. Across from that is the one. So angle one is next in terms of the size. And that's a less than symbol. Oh, I wrote angle one that first time. That's angle two. Sorry about that. Reading is hard. And then the biggest side is 27. So the biz biggest angle must be angle three. Okay, but that's this relationship, this comparison of things within one triangle. There is a relationship between the size of the angle and the size of the opposite side. Okay. If I look at this, the uh, triangle exterior angle theorem, again, it's based on the same principles that we already talked about in that first proof. We're not going to go through this whole proof, but uh, this one is, is kind of easy to see when you think about it. It says the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the length of the third side. Okay, and so when you look at this here, here's a, a this first triangle is complete uh, because those those two sides are long enough. Okay, when you compare these two sides, these two sides together is bigger than this third side. Okay, and that's important if we want to be able to connect this thing and make make a triangle. Versus, 
If we look at something like this guy, see, when you look at XZ, it's bigger than XY and YZ put together, which means I can't connect these. See, these two pieces aren't long enough in order to be able to connect to make a triangle. And I could keep lowering these down, lowering these angles down this way in order to try to bring those closer together. But if they're not bigger than XZ together, they're not going to reach, okay? You could also think of it this way. If I had two pieces that added up to XZ, I would have to bring them flat in order to make them connect. And then I still wouldn't have a triangle. So those two pieces have to be just a little bit bigger than XZ in order for me to, to raise these up and connect them to make a triangle, okay? And that's all this is saying. Those, those two sides have to uh, at least add up to being bigger than the third side, okay? For example, if I look at these, it says determine if the triangle uh, with the given side uh, lengths is possible. I want to know if this is a possibility. And again, the, the foundation here is that, hey, any two sides have to add up to be bigger than the third side. If not, they're not going to reach, so it's not going to make a triangle. Okay, They're going to come up short like this second guy over here. Okay, So if I look at something like this guy, I just have to do some addition. I have to look at this and say, hey, 3 plus 7, 10, is that bigger than 8? Yes, so that one looks good. And then I have to compare some of these other ones. I have to say, okay, how about 3 plus 8? Is that bigger than the 7? Yes, that works. And then the last set, I have to just make sure right here. 7 plus 8, is that bigger than the 3? Yes. Any two sides when added together is bigger than the third side, which means I could make a triangle out of these lengths. Okay? So yes, I could make a triangle out of these lengths. Okay? Okay? If I look at the next one, same kind of thing. I look at it and say, okay, any two sides have to add up to be bigger than the third, third side. So I'll start with these. If I did this guy plus this guy, 25, that's bigger than the third side of 5. Okay, so that works. All right? If I looked at something like uh, uh, this guy and this guy, those add up to 20, which is bigger than this third side. So that works. Okay? The problem I run into is these guys. When I add these two together, it gives me a 15. Is that bigger than this third side? And the answer is no. So I wouldn't be able to form a triangle here. That 5 and 10 wouldn't be big enough to connect into a triangle. If I tried to draw this, I'd have a plank that was 15. And then I'd take the 5 piece and the 10 piece, and they would come up just a little bit short. In order to get those to, not, to, to touch, I would have to lower this thing all the way down till it was a... Uh, a line segment again, okay? Uh, and I wouldn't have any shape here. It's got to at least be bigger than that guy. It can't be equal to. So no, I cannot create a triangle out of these three sides, okay? If I look at this last one, if a triangle has two sides measuring five feet and eight feet, what are the possible values for the third side? And uh, I would probably set it up this way. I would go like this. I would say, hey, you know what? I got five, eight, and then some unknown side. I'm going to call it X, all right? And the thing I know is, is, first of all, you know, any two sides have to add up to be bigger than the third side, okay? So, like, if I added these two sides together, that gives me 13, all right? And so that 13, that has to be bigger than that third side. That has to be bigger than X, okay? And so if I thought of it that way, if I said, you know, 13 has to be bigger than or greater than X, okay? The, the reality is that I'm saying that X has to be less than 13, all right. If X is too big, then the, the five and the eight uh, won't be enough to kind of connect those. OK, but it's also important to do subtraction here. See, that was addition. I also have to subtract these. And here, here's why. If I do the eight minus uh, the five here, that gives me a three. And see, that's important because if I were to say this third side was three, well, now look at this. It doesn't work. If I do the five plus the three, it doesn't quite make it uh, because that only equals the eight. Those sides wouldn't be long enough in order to, to, to make a triangle, okay? Those two sides, the five and the X, have to add up to bigger than the eight. So in other words, what this is saying that, hey, X has to be at least greater than three, okay? So when I, when I think about this, X has to be bigger than three to make sure I can connect a triangle because of that eight. But it also has to be less than 13 to make sure that the eight and the five could connect if X was the longest side. Okay, so my answer becomes this compound inequality. X has to be bigger than 3, but less than 13. Okay, and that was feet. Let me throw some units in here.
Okay?